You know, even I'm, I'm, you know, with Roberta being here, Roberta um, really has such, like all of us here, you know, we're all pressing through, and she has great faith, and she has been through a lot, but she's never given up. And I appreciate that, and that's what God is asking of us. And so what I've, I've really sensed, and my husband and I both sensed that the Lord wanted us to teach, do a series on the basics, the foundations of faith, and how do we develop our faith. And, you know, I've been saved a long time, and I have been studying this and forever. I mean, it's one of my foundational principles that I love to stand upon, but the, the word of faith is what sets us free. It's what causes our prayers to be answered. It's what causes breakthrough. But what are the basic foundations of it? Now, before we go there, this today is first fruits, and I think it's really interesting. It's the month. I, I did give you a picture, but you don't have to, you don't have to do it, uh, of Tammuz, T-A-M-M-U-Z, I am going, in Jesus' name, I'm saying this publicly, I am going to learn how to work this computer without wanting to throw it out the window. I am going to do it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is the month that I think it's really interesting that we decided to do start the faith series today because this is the month that Israel sent the spies to the promised land to see what was there and report to the people. And they sinned. Two, two leaders said, we are well able, but the others just focused on what they saw, not on what the Spirit of God was saying to them. And it's also a time when Israel um, sinned by making the golden calf, which resulted in breaking of the first tablet given to Moses by God. And it, it's, you know, this month they, they're, they're focusing on the breastplate of righteousness in our worship. So one of the catchphrases was, watch your mouth and your confession. And, and it has to do with covenant alignment, which enables us to walk in power and strength. So I just thought that was right on the money, Lord. Thank you for that confirmation. But uh, God wants us to, to flow in, um, in great faith. He says, when I come back, and I quote this often to the earth, will I find faith on the earth? It's not just, oh, I, I believe in God. It's that mountain moving. Peter spoke about, you know, what was it, the chick coming out of the eggshell? Or, you know, whatever, whatever barrier that we've been experiencing, it's time. We are breaking out. But it doesn't just happen. It's, we, there's a requirement on our end, okay? So you can go to the next slide. Um, so I, I okay. So in John chapter 1, I wanted to take my time with this. I don't know how much we're going to get through, but we're going to do this for a couple of weeks. So um, just open up your hearts, okay? So in the beginning, before all time, was the Word Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines on, on in the darkness, and the darkness did un, not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. Now, if you go back, just go back, in the beginning, before all time, was the Word. When we are decreeing the Word, Jesus is the Word. Yes. He is wrapping himself around us. We are, we are speaking, we're becoming one with heaven, all right? And so, again, we may have a mental ascent of, of the Word, but we have to become one. We have to be in covenant. We have to become married to the Word. So, so before I get into the teaching, are there things you're standing and believing God for? Yes. I think we all can say yes to that, right? Well, I just know that the Lord said to me, he said, yes, Trisha, you do have faith, but now you need to kick it up. You need to get an understanding. Well, first of all, we know that we serve the Lord because we love him, but you need to get an understanding of what I want to do, but you're going to have to do it from my understanding, from the spirit of God within you versus you know, just, you know, what we think, and then we get discouraged, and you know how that all happens, right? So Jesus is the word, and we have to learn to use our words effectively. Life and death, death and life are in the power of our tongue. What are we releasing? What are we saying over our situation? How many times that are we in a situation where we know that with God all things shall be impossible, but then when something happens, we revert back to, oh my God, this is what 
you know, the world is saying, this is what can happen. I mean, I've, I've done it. It's like it get that fear thing rises up, right? But when you build yourself up continuously, I'm telling you, it, it shifts things. That addiction, you speak the word, you decree the word, it dries that root system up. I, listen, the, the, I'm all for all the aids we have to help us, but if you get in the word and you are determined to find that treasure, if you're determined and say, if the word says I don't need to stay messed up and I don't need to stay stuck in this situation, and the word says that I can overcome it, well, then I'm going to do what it takes because it doesn't just happen. There, there's a requirement on our end. There's a requirement. And so I know that there are things that I need shaken. I need shifted in my life. And I am, I am grabbing the word. You know, I, I have, if I only can remember how to work my, uh, which I will work it, my iPad. It's not working. I need a new one. But my, my Bibles, I, have my, I bring my different Bibles. They carry my bag. It's like, what do you have in this? I have all my different Bibles because I want to look it up in all the different versions because I want to get it in me. I, if I don't understand this thing and I'm looking up this word, well, I want to know what it all means. Now, for those of you who are technical, um, you know, look it up. And, and I do like it. I do look it up. And I love, I like holding my Bibles. All right? So I have my Passion. I have my Amplify, my New King James. I have my, my Message version. You know, I have it all. So that's why, you know, I'm also trying to keep my arms in shape. So it's twofold, you know? So many of us have been taken captives through our words. What are the words? What are you declaring? What are you speaking? We call those things, in Romans 4 it says, we call those things which be not as though they are. In other words, what is that thing that you are trusting the Lord for? What is that thing? Like, for example, I mean, we all want restoration in families, right? Well, I, people came up. People were praying for family members. We want, we want restoration in our finances, right? We want, there's many different things. God, there, there's a gazillion scriptures. What scripture are you standing on? I've met with people, and I've asked them. I said, what, what is the word of the Lord to you? What's, what's God saying? And you know what I get? A blank stare. <laughs> I said, well, what scripture are you standing on? Um, I said, but well, do you know what John 3.16 is? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. So, you know, it's not, it's not good. We are required to know the word. It, you know, and I've said this before. If this was your work manual, and your work manual said you're going to get 22 weeks off paid vacation, are you going to look through to make sure you know the ins and outs of what the book says about what you are entitled to? Right? I mean, so this is the same thing. I mean, and, and of course we do it because we love God, but I want to know what my legal rights are. I have a covenant promise with God. I ha he says that we can speak to our mountain and we can command it to fall into the sea. Does it happen overnight? Some does. Sometimes it does. And other times it doesn't. But through the adversity, you get stronger and stronger. Right, Roberta? You get stronger and you press through. Ro Roberta could have gave up on God and said, you know what? Forget this. I have experienced this thing and this thing and this thing, but I'm pressing through to find out what does the Word of God say about how I can overturn this situation. He never called me to walk in defeat. We, that's not in our DNA. What's in our DNA is to walk as a, a people that are a people of all impossibility. That's what's in our DNA. So um, let's see what my next scripture is. I have a lot of scripture here. So, so in Hosea 4, 6, in the Amplified, it says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge of my law where I reveal my will. So that word uh, destroyed means brought to silence. The next slide. So... What happens is when you don't understand your rights or what the word of the Lord says, your voice is taken away because then you walk in defeat. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge where I will reveal my will. So destroyed means brought to silence, but knowledge there means perception, to learn, to distinguish. In other words, to discern what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because a lot of times you'll hear things, but then you have to just get, check your heart uh, by the Spirit and say, Lord, what are you saying to me about this? But if you don't have the promises of the Word in you, you don't know it. And that's how we develop our discernment. So the, uh, the, I have here um, the next one. You should have had the next one where it spoke about... All right, forget it. 
Um, so in Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. For by faith, trust, and holy fervor, born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. By faith, we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purposes by the word of the God. So that what we see was not made out of things which are visible. So, in other words, there's an invisible realm that, that that's what the word helps us to see, what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Our words, when we are decreeing things, when we are praying things, we're not to pray our problems, we're to pray the word. When we pray, we're creating, we're framing things. He's the, he's the architect, and we're framing what we're decreeing in the realm of the spirit. So you understand that the enemy is going to do everything he can to get you to walk in doubt and unbelief because he knows this overcoming, conquering power of God that's within us that causes his dunamis to break through all right so um i want to read to you well first of all do you all know what a title deed is i'm sure y'all do but it's a legal deed or document constituting evidence of a right especially to ownership of property so think about that in relation to our faith it's the evidence it's a legal deed you walk in faith the lord's saying listen i don't care what they're saying here's what my word says if i've given you a promise you are well able to overcome and do exceedingly abundantly above all i have gone to this and I've shared so many testimonies of standing even though I was scared even though it's it seemed like no way even when I never I didn't deserve it I told you about my job situations you know I wasn't a good employee at the time now I'm a good employee but I wasn't good at the time I I I just wasn't and so but but God then I got saved and then God said no 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 girlfriend you're gonna have to change your ways and so I did with God's help and God had mercy and favor and grace upon me and that's what he has upon you and me he's the God of all possibility that's who we are that's our DNA Listen, for those of you that have been battling and you've been stuck in a job situation or you've been stuck in a limited amount of finances, the Lord is saying to you today, and take this by faith, I am the God of breakthrough. I am the God, I am that icebreaker that will break through every hidden obstacle, every lie that's been holding you back. The Lord's saying, choose to believe me. Choose to decree the word. And I'm going to give you the, the directives and how to go about this. I'm telling you, this is not something that I am just speaking out of a book. I have lived this. And, it, and it's the truth of the word. The word shifts things. I want to read to you out of Hebrews 11, 1 through 3 in the Passion. Whew. It says, now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. This testimony of faith is what previous generations were commanded for. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. When we are speaking in faith, we are, we are creating and we are, we will birth. I'll tell you that much. And faith, you know, faith makes people feel uncomfortable. I'm going to say that too, because when you start standing and you're like, you know what? I don't need to tell you all what I'm thinking, but there are those, you know, that will say to you, you know, you're getting a little too fanatical about the word. Well, praise the Lord. That's a great compliment because the Bible says I'm either hot or cold, but if I'm lukewarm, you spit me out of his, you know, he'll vomit you out. Listen, we need to know in whom we believe. And know that we have a spirit of might that God has blessed us with that we can operate in. We are never to just be people that just are making it through. But God wants us to understand that this brings us into a, a realm that, 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 that causes breakthrough. Faith is an, an anchor in an, un, in an unseen realm. It's our hope. Now, I'm going to get into seeds and all what that means. But in 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and Amplified, 
Uh, it says here, for the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers' minds that they should not discern truth, and not just unbelievers, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, amen, brother, of uh, the Messiah, who is the image and likeness, likeness of God. Um, I have another version. I don't know if I gave that one to you. Oh, good. Even if our gospel message is veiled, this is out of the Passion. I want to read two versions. Even if our gospel message is veiled, it is only veiled to those who are perishing, for their minds have been blinded by the God of this age, leaving them in unbelief. Their blindness keeps them from seeing the day spring light of the wonderful news of the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the divine image of God. Now, listen to that, what that word blinded means. All right, it means to darken the mind, to mentally blind you, a puff of smoke, to inflate with pride and self conceit. It means a smoke screen, and a smoke screen is created to conceal military operations. So our military operation to overcome is the word of God, is our worship, is our declaration, is our, our, our devotional time before the Lord. But sometimes we all can get a little too busy, can't we? And so uh, that's where we need to cool our jits a little bit and, and allow the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, refocus us and get us back on track again. Uh, unbelief takes no risks and almost always get what it expects. Wow. Unbelief, all, you know, almost, it doesn't take risk because you're walking in fear, afraid to make a mistake, afraid to step out. I know a little bit about this. <laughs> and almost always gets what you expect. So I don't, I mean, I think we have, well, I can speak for my own life. I used to have a lot of faith in that, <laughs> indirectly, because I was too afraid to step out. I was too afraid to step out like on the job situation when I wanted to, I just couldn't take where I was at any longer and I needed to transfer and everything, everything in the natural said, you're a joke and you cannot, you can't move forward. And I said, well, Lord, Either you're real or not. I, what do I have to lose? Staying in a stinky position that I can't stand. I want to move forward. And so I was willing, but I built myself up. I prayed in the spirit. I, I got the word of the Lord and, and, and spoke the word. So the next portion of scripture is in Mark. And I'm going to read this whole thing out of, out of the passion because I like the way it's worded. And I'm going to talk to you about our, the word being the seed. And I know a lot of you have heard this, but it's good to listen to it again. All right? So... It says here, um, once again, Jesus went to teach the people on the shore of Lake Galilee, and a massive crowd surrounded him. The crowd was so huge that he had to get into a boat and teach the people from there, and he taught them many things by using parables to illustrate spiritual truths, saying, Consider this. This is the word of the Lord to all of us here. Consider this. A farmer went out to sow seeds, and as he cast his seeds, some of it fell along the beaten path, and soon the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell onto gravel, and with no topsoil, and the seeds quickly sprouted, since the soil had no depth. But when the days grew hot, <clears throat> the sprouts were scorched and withered because they had insufficient roots. Other seeds fell among the thorns, so when the seeds sprouted, so did the thorns, crowding out the young plants so they could not produce no grain. But some of the seeds fell onto good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded 30, some 60, and even 100 times as much as was planted. And if you understand this, you need to respond. And then it goes on to say, and afterwards, Jesus and his disciples and those close to him remained behind to ask Jesus about his parables. And he said to them, the privilege of intimately knowing the mystery of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you. That's for us. But not to the others, where every, everything is revealed in parables. For even when they see what I do, they will not understand. And when they hear what I say, they will learn nothing. Otherwise, they would repent and be forgiven. Then he said, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand any parable? Let me explain. The, so, the farmer sows the word as seed. And what falls onto the beaten path represents those who hear the word, but immediately Satan uh, comes and he, he, Satan appears and snatches it from their heart. 
The seed sown on the gravel represents those who hear the word and receive it joyfully, but because their heart fails to sink a deep root into the word, they don't endure for long. And for when trouble or persecution comes on the account of the word, they immediately wilt and fall away. And the seeds sown among thorns represent those who hear the word, but they allow the cares of this life and the seductions of wealth and the desires for other things to crowd out and choke the word so it produces nothing. But the seed sown on good soil represents those who open their hearts to receive the word and their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a, a harvest of 30, 60, and even 100 times more than what was sown. So, you know, God wants us to be diligent to understand um, what the Word of God is and what He's saying. So, uh, uh, so anyway, so I'm not even going to read that. So, the Word of God has to be taken seriously. And so, the seed, there's power in the seed. And when you look up the word seed, it means sperma, which means to conceive and to give birth. And I wrote to miracles. And so, that, it germinates. And so, just as a husband and wife get together... And the seed produces, this is what the word does. It produces. And so when a, a seed is in a woman, she doesn't give birth the next day or three months, four months. It takes nine months. There's time. There's a germination process. There's, you know, there's a process that's being established. And so during that process, I mean, I've done it. I, you know, I start like the first day, and by the third day, I'm like, oh, my God, this is so frustrating. When is this going to change already, you know? I mean, that was three days. And so, you know, I mean, it happens to all of us, but, um, but that's why we need each other. That's why we need to encourage each other. But I was determined to not stay in a, stunk, a stinky place of poverty. I was in poverty, you guys. I lived with a poverty mindset, the fear of man. And just really limiting, I talk about, the Bible talks in, in, I, in Psalm 78 about not limiting the Holy One of Israel. Honey, I limited him up to kazoo. Ask my husband when we first married. I mean, thank God for the grace that he had in dealing with me because, I mean, you saw it. And so, <laughs> he's just looking at me. <laughs> I, there was grace on both sides, you know, that's what happens. Kind of balance each other out. Well, in this case, believe me, whew, I, I gave him, I, I mean, he had to really develop his faith. But anyway, so see, so, so what, what are you planting? What are you planting? Are you planting more of your doubt and unbelief? I know I've had my seasons of doing that where, you know, it's funny because the Lord will course correct us. And he's like, mm-mm, you need to stop saying things you shouldn't be saying. What's the word of the Lord say? And then it's like, oh, yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, that, that's going to continuously happen with us because we must renew our mind so that we will be transformed. And he, there's a renovation process that takes place. Think about if you're renovating your home. Wouldn't it be lovely if they start renovation and one day it's done? Well, that's not the case. There's a renovation process. That's what the word literally means, that when we're, our minds are getting restored by the renewing of our mind, he's renovating the space and all the junk in our brains of the lies that we have believed that we have come into contact with. If the word doesn't have final say, then it's wrong. The word says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, now remember, you plant a seed... So when you're planting a seed, you know, I planted my tomatoes. And so, let me tell you, before I planted my tomatoes, I had to pull all the weeds out. And it took me forever, not only, I mean, Linda came out, my sister came out afterwards, and I'm pulling the weed, and of course I went flying, I'm screaming, my sneaker got stuck in the dirt, and of course I fell back, and I looked at her, I said, don't you laugh either. <laughs> and, but it, it, it was a lot of work. And these stupid vica vines that, that took over my, my, my dirt and everything, I had to pull all them out. I had to, it, was, it, was, it took work. So when you have these weeds, it's not going to just be one little, well, I quoted the scripture today. Uh, hello, it's going to be more than that. You, you know, like what I do is I get my scripture. Let's say, uh, you know, believe in God for financial situations or family situations. Get scriptures that pertain to that. Meditate on it. And I'm telling you, the more... I, I was reading one of the scriptures going over uh, for this message today. I must have read the scripture 8,000 times. I'm reading it, 
And it's like jumping out, and I'm seeing it in a different light. That's the beauty of the word. It's not a book. It's a supernatural, life-giving Zoe book that gives life, and it's constantly renewing and bringing breakthrough and freedom into our lives. So think of it. The word, it, well, it's not, the word is a seed. So God wants to break us out of poverty. God wants to break us out of, of being depressed. God wants to break us out of being fearful. He wants to break us out of being uh, disappointed and not trusting that God can cause restoration in marriages. Amen. Only God can do that. Amen. Conception can't take place without seed. Amen. Seed time and harvest. Amen. You know, so I don't want to plant doubt and unbelief. I don't want to plant fear. fear. I want to plant truth. I want to plant, God, you said, I don't know how in the world you're going to do it. I feel led to share a testimony about a couple that uh, we all knew from my old church, and um, they hated each other. And she actually told me that when she would see her husband, she, when he came home, she would say to him, have I told you lately I hate you? <laughs> I'm serious. She said to me, the only way I can stand him, she says, I had to put vodka in my chocolate milk before he came home. I'm serious. And so, of course, I'm trying to keep a straight face as she's talking to me. I said, really? And she said, yeah. She said he went into, um, he was hospitalized for 10 days with, you know, such severe depression. And he, he actually thought that they would say that he was crazy because he thought it would be one way of getting out of the marriage. And she said, and, you know, he came home and we just hated each other's guts. And he, she would hit him. She was the abuser. <laughs> And so she said, the one day when she saw me, she says, oh, my God, I did it again. I said, what did you do? She said, she got me so mad. She said, I was walking. He was sitting in his chair, and the break front is here. And she said, he said something. I just grabbed his hair and, you know, started to. I said, you can't do that. You can't hit him. I said, that's abuse. I said, you have to stop. So anyway, at the time, I was like, did, he, did you hurt him? No, I'm kid. So I had to repent for my evil thought. I did. I really did. But anyway. So, and we're going to pray over all the women. <laughs> and so, honestly, <laughs> what? So, I told her it was wrong. I did. And so, we had to minister to her. And, and the, actually, when she got saved, like, she said to me, you mean to tell me it means I need to stay with him? That God hates divorce? I said, well... Yeah. I said, Let, let's pray through it and see what we can do. She's like, oh, brother. So he used to hold her purse so that she couldn't come to church with any money because he didn't want her to give. And he wound up becoming uh, one of the board members on, on the, <laughs> the church finances. But anyway, so she started to pray and believe God for a miracle. So much so that, I mean, they're a wonderful couple, and so much so that their lives were so turned around that they became head of the marriage ministry. He was on the, uh, the board for finances, and God brought breakthrough and restoration. See, God is the God of all possibility, amen? Because I tell you the truth, I, you know, you're looking at these things like, oh, Lord, maybe she shouldn't leave him. Gosh, you know, but, but, but again, you have to go back. What does the word say? And so however we can work. And now for those of you who have gone through situations and there's been divorce, there, there's a case by case. And you have to hear the word of the Lord. In her particular case, they were just both crazy. And, and so in her case, her, her psychiatrist that she saw was writing a thesis on her because she never met anyone like her in her entire life. And so then they went back to share the gospel with the doctor who was totally blessed, really. And so anyway, so getting back to the word here, the seed in Mark chapter 4, 15 um, the enemy snatches the word immediately. So, you know, you, you know, I'm sure many of you, you've seen it in your own life when people initially start to minister to you or if you're ministering to someone, they'll listen and then boom, another situation, another situation occurs where they're, they're taken away. One of the things we have to learn to do is to pray that the seed isn't snatched. We have to pray and take authority over the enemy's tactics to remove um, the word from that person's life or even from your own life. The next uh, area is in Mark 4, verses 16 through 17, where there's stony ground. Initially, the words receive, but there's offenses in their hearts. So, you know, we teach a lot about that in... Um, 
Elijah House, where we are possessing your vessels about heart issues. If there's a lot of offense, if there's bitterness, if there's resentment, when I feel that sometimes, you know, you can feel like the seed of God is ricocheting. It's not taking root. Check your heart. It's not God. And we all have gotten offended. We all have gotten hurt. You know, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, why are you offended? I mean, why are you surprised when you're offended? You know, we're, it's life happens. You know, we, people get on our nerves, and Lord knows we know we get on their nerves. So it, it works both ways. And so I always say this, mercy triumphs over judgment. So you sow mercy, you reap mercy. But, but you know, there's offenses. What do you, sometimes we're offended at God. We're offended at each other. And like Peter said, we want to be allies. And what do we do? You know, what, the Christians are the worst. We, we, want, we, we want to attack each other because we don't agree with something. We want to attack you over this thing and that thing. That's got to stop. It, it hinders us. It hinders your prayer life. And we all do it. And at times you get aggravated. You know how it is. And then it's like, all right, Lord, forgive me. You know, you start judging that person. You see that person's like, mm. and then, then you're like, all right, Lord, but for the grace of God, they're going, let me shut my mouth. You know, because it, it, I'm telling you, that's scary to me. So anyway, uh, and, and when you realize it really quick, that's really helpful. <laughs> So receive the word. They didn't, and it didn't take root. So, and it didn't build a root system. If you don't have a deep root, those vinca vines that I have, I don't know if you know, it's a little pretty, you know, cascading leaves that come. If don't put it near anything that it can, you know, uh, take root in your dirt. That's what happened. It took over. It took over. That's what we need to be doing with the word of God. It needs to be taken over, the vines. That, you know, and it was so hard I, to try to pull all them out. It was so difficult. And I still have to get the rest of them. And so, you know, so it doesn't happen on one, one uh, digging, <laughs> one pulling out. Another time I was pulling a root out, and I went flying down my front lawn. <laughs> Just flipped over. Takes strength, and you have to get back up again. So affliction, in, in Mark 4, verses 30 and 22, it says, Afflictions and persecutions come against the word. The word will be stolen. So let's, let's give a scenario. The word becomes diluted. You're believing, let's say, for your, uh, uh, you know, your family member your, uh, to get saved. And you're trusting the Lord, and you're having your hallelujah moment, you're worshiping, and you're decreeing, and the person comes home and acts like the devil incarnate. Yeah. And just you're like... Oh, my God. And then the enemy saying to you, see, the word doesn't work. And so that's where you have to know in whom you believe. And I released the word about Jesus today. Lord, I know in whom I believe. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I hear. I know that your word says that with you nothing shall be called impossible. And I choose to trust you. Lord, I thank you that you're the God of turnaround. You give the word about you're a breaker, that breaker that breaks through the frozen assets, that breaks through the difficult situations. Lord, your word says breakthrough. When, when Annette gave the word about who an IRS uh, bill of 44000 and it was forgiven, she stood on the word. They, she and her husband, they prayed, they worshiped, they called things, they called in miracles. God shifts things, all right? So, um, so we have to understand that there's a strategy too, and that the enemy always wants to shut your heart down. He wants your word to become diluted. He wants your word to, to withdraw. Well, you know what? I don't want to trust God again. I don't want to step out there because then I'm going to be disappointed. You see how he works? You see the strategy that's there? And that's where it's like, all right, God, you can be honest about your situation. Here's what I'm feeling. But, Lord, I know what your word says. And the word doesn't talk about our feelings. It says it's by faith. Not by our feeling. It's by faith. Because if we went by our feelings, oof, we'd be in a heap of trouble. It's by faith. If God went by feelings, I don't know how many of us would be alive, right? It's by faith, by faith. So where, where's your heart at? Are you, you know, I looked up some, it, just in Webster's Dictionary about a hard heart. And it, talks, it talked about, this is Webster's Dictionary, having a callous heart, um, unbelief. Um, I can't understand my handwriting. Grief. Um, the thoughts that, that are negative, you know, he's always working on it. And you can say, yeah, but I've been waiting 10 years. Well, let me ask you all those 10 years, what were your faith words like? Yeah. What have you been saying? Has it been consistent or 
It's up one day, down one day, up one day, down one day. Listen, I've done it, so I know. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. And so I have on my desk, I, you know, I have my scriptures. I look, I have my pictures. I have my vision board. We had an awesome night with our vision board making, and um, it was awesome. But I've had mine through the years, and I have it, and I'm decreeing the word of the Lord. I've seen many miracles happen. And it's not like you're using, just so that you know, it's not like it's a rabbit's foot. It's a relationship we have with Jesus Christ, and he loves his children. And the Bible says it delights him to see his kids prosper, spirit, soul, and body. He wants us to prosper emotionally, physically. What good is it having all things and then you're a mess? He's saying, listen, I have you all covered. He's saying, trust me. But we have to get out of this mental ascent. So many times we are walking with just a, we know we believe God, but it's not one in our heart. See, that's what makes the difference. And it's not, I mean, the devil, the Bible says the devil knows and he trembles. He knows the word. But it's us when you become so one with that word that no matter what's being said, Lord, the Lord spoke to me and this is what God says. And I'm standing on it. I am not staying in this stinking place. I'm not staying. When I got saved, I didn't know where to go to church. So I didn't attend church, but I devoured the word. And again, I, I only can say the miracle in my job situation because I, I just feel uh, some of you are in that situation. Um, I, you know, like I said, I had a bad record. And I, um, I, I knew that I said to the Lord, I repented for rebellion and disobedience and, you know, just doing my own thing there. And I said, just have grace, have mercy on me. And Lord, would you give me an opportunity? And um, I went on the interview, the, from the supervisor laughed at me, to my peers laughed at me, and said, you are not getting this job. But I had a word in my heart that said, with God, nothing shall be called impossible. And I held on to that, and I, I was afraid. It's not like you don't have emotions. I just said, I can't stay here. I can't stay in this funky place any longer. I cannot. The Lord says, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm not defeated. You're not defeated. Your situation, you're not defeated. Hear what the word of the Lord is saying. You are not defeated. You are not under. You are above, the word of the Lord says. It says that he'll cause you to triumph in every situation. But see, what we have to get out of is that uh, religious mindset. I'm telling you, a religious spirit holds us back. It's like, who does she think she is saying that we can command the word of the Lord? Tell that thing to shut up. Because the word has to have final say. I'm telling you, this isn't, this isn't just like some fairy tale. It's the truth of the word. I honestly, I'm not about church. I can be down the shore. I can, I can be like all of you here. I don't need to just come in and check in and go to church once a week or twice a week. We twice a week, you know, three times a week, you know, it, it's real. What, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? I don't honestly think I, I would be alive right now if, if I didn't get saved. I really don't. So God wants us to know. So anyway, with the job, I interviewed. The guy even said to me, I don't know why I'm going to give you this job. I, I don't know why. He said, but I'm going to give you a shot. And I'm like, oh. I said, because he said to me, I don't know. Why would I do this? I said, I understand. I said, I know. I'm not that person anymore. I said, but if you give me a chance, I, I said, you'll see. I'll be a good employee. And, and if I call in sick once, I'll quit. <laughs> you don't even have to fire me. And, and you know, I was a really good worker. And, and um, everybody but two people on that, that job got saved. And the Lord even used that as an opportunity. So again, God's word. So in Mark 4, 18 and 19, it says, see, well, it's seed sown among the thorns. So what does the enemy do? He knows now you're going to church. He knows now you're committed. So what he'll do is get you distracted. He'll get you so distracted, you might be busy for the things of the Lord, but you're not even having your own devotional time with the Lord. You're, you're, you're occupying, but you're too busy. And you're too busy, and so you're unfruitful. What's the fruit you've been bearing? Is there fruit? So that's what we all have to assess ourselves and we all have to see where are we at? Or are we constantly blaming everybody else for our problems? We have to look here first. Circumstances can happen, but only I can change this. So I made a choice. 
I made a choice, I'm going to change. And I made a choice, Lord, only through you can I be the best employee. Only through you. I know everybody looks at me like, oh, Lord, here she comes. But no, only you can turn that around where I have favor that surrounds me like a shield. Amen. Only you can turn this around, God, with my help. And so I made that choice. I made the choice to not be rebellious, to not tell my boss off. I mean, every, mom, every now and then you had a little moment where you slipped, but... but <laughs> But to not, no, right? I mean, we do. But to not um, walk in that path any longer. The seed of the word, I devoured the word of God. I really did. And my mom, you know, my mother, <laughs> my mom would tell me right where I was at, you know, and I said, she would say to me, oh, brother, she's not reading the book. You know, if I wasn't in the book, it made a difference. That's why we have to get in the Word, because the Word makes a difference. So in John, oh, so then in uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 8 and 20, God, uh, there's a good ground. See, the Bible doesn't say that we're never going to have an issue in life. The Bible doesn't say that you're not going to mess up at times, but we get back up. And we say, Lord, you know what? If God be for me, who can be against me? You are creating a path for me. You're going before me, and you're making a way where there is no way. And the Lord is saying, he, I, every one of us have different circumstances. Some of you are believing, uh, you know, you might be believing to conceive or to have a child. Other you are, some of you are believing for uh, uh, prosperity. Other you are, uh, others are believing for family restoration. You're believing for a complete healing. God is saying, with me, nothing's too impossible. In Genesis, it says, is there anything too hard for me? In Jeremiah, it says that my word is like a hammer, and it breaks and shatters the opposition. See, that's what the word of God does for us. And I honestly, I thought more about suicide. It's so, I'm so saddened over all the people that are committing suicide. They need God. They need God. They need the hope of glory. They need God, the word of God, not just going through the motions, but know and say, Lord, if you can make change to my life, Lord, I am going to surrender myself. I'm going to do what it takes, Lord. I'm going to commit myself. I'm determined for breakthrough. I was determined for breakthrough. I had no hope. I was told you'll never amount to anything. I had no hope but God. And God said, you can. And God says you can break out of the, the, the funk that you're in. God says you can turn things around. God says you can be a mouthpiece. God says you can pray for the people and they'll be sick. God says you can have a happy marriage. God says you can have you know, a blessed family, wonderful children. God said. And so, and he said, and so, so be it. Not what the enemy's saying, not what the mind. I lived my life too long like that. And I, I was really tired of it. And it was either that or kill myself because I heard all the time you need to die. You need to commit suicide. You need to commit suicide. And that's real. And when you feel that pain and when you feel that, you know, so many people here have believed that lie. You, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Suicidal fantasies. I said, Lord, I don't know if I believe you. You know, God is okay with us speaking truth. Yeah. All right? That's okay. So faith doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge your situation. It's just the situation's not going to have final say. Period. The word's going to have final say. But I have to be in his presence to hear the step-by-step -step directions. That's the difference. Sometimes we, we get presumptuous and it's like, well, it just said, well, what did the spirit of the Lord tell you about it? How did he say to go about this? That's where we lack sometimes. We have to hear what is the directive. And he, he said, listen, you're my sheep. So my sheep hear my, my voice, right? So this is what God wants us to understand. In James 1, 18 through 25, in the Passion Translation, um, you know, I'm just going to read the, the last portion, verse 20. It, you know the word in the New King James, it says it's the implanted word that's able to save your soul. So in the, in the um, Passion, it says, you know, that we are to have a, be with a sensitive spirit and we absorb God's word, which has been implanted within our nature, for the word of life has power to continually deliver us. Amen. Continually. It's not a one-shot deal. Continually deliver us. We have to, you know, there's circumstances in life that tries to stop you up. So I need that continual deliverance. I need to get free from grief. 
I need to get free from the disappointment. That's not going to stop me. That's not going to stop me. I'm going to keep on moving. It might stop you up a little bit, but here's what the word of God says that, you know, you shall decree that thing and it shall be established unto you. The Lord saying, the Lord saying, you decide that thing when you decree that thing and say, Lord, I know that you'll give me the strategy and how to, how to break through. And so because God has, in John 15, 16, God has commissioned us to bear fruit. So what I want to ask you today is what seeds have you been planting? What, see, is it unbelief? Because unbelief is also anchored in what's visible, all right? So we, we see those things. Unbelief is anchored in the invisible. So, Lord, I know what you're saying, and, you know, but your, your heart is your spirit man, and so you, you see things by the spirit, right? I mean, you all know what I'm talking about? And so, you, you know, you can keep saying, the, you know, the negative, but that will keep your situation on, on, on lockdown. And so we have this seed in 1 Peter 1.23 in the Passion. It says, For though the eternal and living word of God, through the eternal living God, word of God, you've been born again, and this seed that he planted within you can never be destroyed, but will live and grow inside you for, forever. So I want you to understand something. You are stronger than you realize. We've all been given a measure of faith, and you have it. It's just developing it. It's going to the gym. Those of you who work out, you know that you're not going to just get built and toned just by thinking about it. You have to do something with it, right? So it's the same thing here. God wants us to develop. God wants us to grow. He wants us to build. He wants us to be in that intimate place with him because he desires to bring the blessing and turnaround in my life. You know, again, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough about how hopeless I felt. And, and I thought, wow, if, 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 this, if this word could be true, if I can have turnaround in my life, I'm going to do what it takes. And I'm so grateful I did that. I planted the word. You are to plant the word. And I'm sure many of you are doing it. I'm not saying you're not. But, you know, I'm not where I need to be yet. I know the Lord's saying, listen, I, need, I want you to believe for me. I want you to expand your horizon. You know, Jabez, he's saying, listen, you know, he prayed. He said, oh, 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 expand me, stretch me. You know, expand my territory. I don't want to stay where I'm at. We should never be stagnant. We should always be moving on in the Lord. So, I, again, my question to you is, and I'm going to close, where are you at? What have you been planting are you planting the word of faith? Are you planting truth? I mean, there's a gazillion. So we have several weeks, a couple of weeks we're going to be teaching on it. So I didn't want to, you know, I mean, I have a lot of, I mean, look at all these pages here. I have, I have a lot, but I'm going to close here. What are you planting? What are you believing for? The reality is truth. The rea reality is the word, not what you're seeing. Now, we have to course correct because a lot of it, we can't, you know, change other people, we, we can pray and we can believe for transformation and breakthrough, which we've seen that. But again, it's, it's not through manipulation. It's, it's through us hearing the word of the Lord. First, concentrate on yourself. Before we're going to go try to change everything else, before we start pointing our finger at everyone else for our problems, concentrate on your stuff. Because the fact that you get so sensitive and so, so offended over things, or me so offended over things, I'm speaking from what he tells me. <laughs> he said, you have the problem first. So I have to get before the Lord and say, some it's very evident, but why am I getting so offended? Why am I so sensitive? And it's so easy to blame that other person and not look at your own stuff. So that is a major thing that we need to address because that hinders us from the, our faith growing and that God wants us to cross over to the other side. He's saying, it's time. It's time. It's time for us to move. This is 2018, uh, year of 2018, 5778. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Well, faith will bring us into new beginnings, new beginnings, new finances, restoration, Healing, deliverance, breakthrough. That's what it does. So where are you at? Who are you blaming? Let, let's today say, Lord, I'm going to stop blaming. Let me just look here. 
and let me see. It's not just quoting three scriptures every now and then, praying the spirit. Listen, I don't know about you. I needed to because I needed, I needed some major breakthrough. And I would get up when I worked at the airlines. I had to be there at 6.30 in the morning. And I got up at 3. I, I was desperate. I want to change. I got up at 3, and I... I, I would speak in tongues, and I would get the word, and I would speak the word, and speak the word. Then my entire, and I took about a half hour, and then, because I had to go to LaGuardia Airport, so it was far. So then, I, the whole time I'd pray in the spirit, I didn't care. You know, it's not about our convenience any longer. We cannot. It's not about what floats your boat. It's, Lord, I have a fear of the Lord, and I want to do what's right before you, because I want change, and I want breakthrough. If you're not, if, if that's not where you're at, that's fine, too, but that's not where I'm at. And I want change in my life, and I want transformation. So I would get up, and I would decree the word. I'd come home. I would decree the word. It was a day and night thing. It's throughout the day. You can be on your, you can be walking. You can be shopping. You know, I'm so happy about those uh, earbud things because I'm walking around wherever I'm at. If I'm out and I'm praying in time, I'm, I'm going to go for it because I don't care. I, I want to pray in the spirit. I just, you just get in the habit of that. It's worship God. It's, it, I'm telling you, it's, it's God is, is asking us, are you willing? Are you willing to put your flesh aside? Not allow your flesh to be in control. Are you allowing the spirit man to grow stronger? You know, like if you look at, you know, a big Mr. Hulk, right? Is, it, is your spirit man like that or your flesh? Which is it? Well, I want my spirit man to be like that, to break out of, of the things that are holding me back. And so... Uh, you know, I hope this word is encouraging you because this is what I'm doing. I said, Lord, that for the joy that, like he said, that was set before him, well, this is a joy for me. I'm excited to see what God wants to do and say, I'm choosing to believe. I'm not condemned. I don't feel condemned. I just, the Lord, you know, like as a parent, we always want our children to move on and to grow and to do better. Well, he's doing the same thing for us. He's saying, I have so much more for you. I have so much more for you. I want you to get out of these thinking, thinking, you know, patterns, and I want you to grow. I want you to do what I'm asking you to do to discipline yourself. It's discipline liberty. You discipline yourself for the liberty of God and the freedom of God. That's what he wants us to do. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Amen. 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 I can't wait to hear all of our testimonies of change and growth. I can't wait to see, you know, people that don't have eyeballs and eyeballs created. I can't wait to see people that are crippled healed. I can't wait to see the person that's demonized. You see, you go before that person, you're instantly delivered and not have to go through 15 deliverance sessions. Hey, listen, that's fine too, but, but God is saying, I'm calling you up higher. I want you to believe for more. The Lord's saying, I want you to believe for, this is a word of the Lord, for your mortgages to get paid. The Lord's saying, I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. The Lord wants you to believe for your, your businesses to, to shift and to prosper. There are employees here that need Jesus, but the Lord's asking you to set a boundary line, decree the word of the Lord. You shift the thing. You decide how it's going to be. That's what the Word of God says. We can't let the enemy keep us down anymore by the whispers that we've been hearing. We have to silence that. The Word has to be greater than the whispers. So, Lord, we just thank you that you are releasing a gift of faith in your people in this hour. Lord, your word says it's the conquering uh, word of God or the conquering power of faith that will bring the world to its knees. Lord, we just say yes. And Lord, we thank you for that passion and the zeal of the Lord that's upon us, oh God. We thank you, God, for your word, the sperma that's, that's causing us to conceive in birth, oh God. Lord, we will decree that word. We say the enemy will not steal our seed in Jesus' name. Lord, we will water the seed with the word and praise and tongues and, and however you tell us to do. But we will not deviate. We won't look to the left nor to the right, but we will keep our eyes like flint fixed upon your word. Lord, yes, we thank you that we are the remnant. We are the body that stands and believes your word because you watch over your word to perform it, oh God. So, Lord, I bless each and every person here. I thank you, God, for the seeds that are within each of us. 
all of us. I don't care where we're at. And the Lord is blowing his breath upon you. And he's reviving you with the strength. He's reviving you with the spirit of might and, and his dunamis power. He's saying, don't give up. There are some of you here today that felt like you want to give up. The Lord says, give, don't give up. He may be asking you to, to submit to strategies or counsel or in ways, but, but you know, you're thinking, it's saying no. Will you humble yourself? Humble yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit. Listen, you've been going around the mountain long enough. My husband said it. It's not working. So what do we have to shift? It could be that little tweaking the Lord's saying. Just be open. So, Lord, we just thank you for your amazing love. You love us all so much. And you see the great potential. There is an expected end. And he has great, it's for peace and prosperity and, and joy and for his kingdom. People, you want them to want what you have. So, Lord, we just thank you for your breaker anointing that's on us. On, on the kids, from the little kids on up to the elderly. We just thank you. No, no one's exempt. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for a hunger and a thirst that you're creating within us. That, Father, it will not ever be tamed or put out. This thing, it's a boiling pot. I said this the other day. There's a boiling pot happening here. And it's getting hotter and hotter. And there's a passion of God that he's releasing within us. So, God, we just say yes. And we thank you, God, for your love that you won't let us stay stuck. You're going to keep pushing us forward. And we say yes to that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.